Hi everyone, thanks so much for responding to my, my video post where I would ask for your suggestions about the topic of my next YouTube video. And there was an array of responses. It seemed like intonation crept up a little bit more than other topics. So I've put together a list of, of tips for improving intonation. The first thing is just to remember that an untoned or an out of shape hand is difficult to control. Imagine walking with really weak ankles. So if you let too much time go between practice sessions, it sets you back. Even if you have practiced a lot before, or even if you understand what you're supposed to do, it's, it's really hard to have great intonation if the muscles in the hand are out of shape. So, don't let a day go by that you don't spend some time at least just drumming your fingers on the fingerboard. All right, so the first tip, okay, that was just advice before. So now the first tip is finger preparation. Okay, so imagine you're gonna reach a big jar on the top of a shelf. You're going to open your hand, okay, wide enough to grab the jar. You're not gonna reach up like this and then touch the jar and say, oh, well, I didn't prepare and I'm gonna open my hand and grab the jar. You, you anticipated grabbing the jar and you changed the shape of your hand before you got there. So, same thing with the notes on the violin. I want you to think about the shape of your hand and your finger arch. Okay, so how the finger is arched. Is it gonna be like this? Is it gonna be like this? Is it gonna be like that or like that? Anticipate the placement by making sure that you adequately change the shape of your finger before you get to the note. Okay, so this is preparation. So what I want you to do is to start going through your music, okay? And just go through measure at a time. Without the right hand, you're not going to play the notes with the bow, you're just going to walk through with your left hand, okay? And let's say that um, I'm going to play Okay, that's the opening of the D minor Bach unaccompanied uh, partita, the Allemande. So let's say that I'm going to play that. So I'm going to walk through and as I go, and the, the goal is, is to be as clear and concise as you can with language about the preparation of each next finger. All right, so I start with a D. Okay, I know how that feels. I'm thinking about my hand shape, the shape of the finger. Now the next note after a D in this is an E. Okay, I know what that interval is. I know it's a whole step. What does a whole step feel like between second and third finger? Well, do I have to reach? Do I have to reach far? What is, what's the shape of my third finger? Am I prepared? Am I going to prepare before I play it? Because you don't want to, to play. Okay, you never want to scoot the finger after you play a note. Okay, you want to have adequately prepared. So, it's a whole step. I'm going to prepare and it's going to go down in the right place. The next note is an F. I know how far that is from my third finger. If you don't know, you don't know your intervals or you don't know the difference between a whole step and a half step, it'd be great for you to learn it. I do have a note reading and a music theory for just for violin course at Violin Lab. So check that out. I go through all of this stuff carefully and you would learn it. It would help your intonation tremendously. So that's the next finger. So the, I'm basically plotting. I'm plotting note by note using clear language so that I can form the right kinds of thoughts, the right kinds of directives to my fingers to help them prepare so that I have a much better success rate for intonation. All right, now my next two tips have to do with building skills that I know you know about and I know you know you should do, but few of us really do practice doing this. Okay, the first one is to improve your self-listening skills. Okay, we can easily listen to other people and judge instantly how well their intonation is. I think that we've all watched like singing competition shows like 
American Idol or The Voice, and we can, we can hear when someone's pitchy pretty quickly. I think probably 90% of the population can do that. And especially if you hear like one singer and then they juxtapose to another singer, you can, you can tell which one sings better in tune. But it's really hard to hear our own intonation while we're playing because we're thinking about so many other things. So to improve that skill, here's a really good, here's a really good exercise. The term that I'm going to be using is audiate. Okay, audiate is when you can hear something in your mind and then try and replicate that when you play. And you are hearing the next note just nanoseconds before you play it. I, I do this and I think it's a, a really great exercise. So what I do is find whatever piece I'm working on, find a YouTube video or a recording of some famous, perfect player, and then just loop it. Just loop it about four or five times. So here's, here's Hilary Hahn playing that same little excerpt, that D minor allemage. Okay, now after I've listened to, to that, four or five times, I, I have it in my ear, in my mind's ear. So it's in there. Now I want to replicate what I have in my mind and see if I match it up, okay? You're gonna compare what comes out compared, you're gonna compare that to what's in your, in your head. can't sing at all. It's, it's horrific. But just the act of trying to sing the next pitch is really good, is really good to do. But more than anything, you are hearing it in your head and you are seeing if what comes out matches what you're audiating. But it's great to get a really perfect performer and listen to that first. That sets the bar. You implant that into your head it's here and then you play it. It's really a powerful tool for improving intonation. Now along the same lines of becoming really good self listeners is that we have to start working with our perception of intonation when we're playing. Because the truth is, is that there are so many things to think about. The mind is very occupied when playing and in spite of listening to ourselves, when we're playing, in spite of trying to be as tuned in as we can to intonation, we just don't always perceive it factually. The brain is really good at convincing itself that things are correct. I have many times been really confounded when I've heard really good musicians with highly tuned musical ears playing out of tune. I remember when I was younger, had a couple of classmates classmates with perfect pitch. They, they, they had perfect pitch and yet their intonation wasn't very good. I don't think that they weren't listening to themselves. I just think that they weren't perceiving the facts of their intonation. Now, I think that all those great players who play perfectly in tune had coaches and instructors and often musical parents who were, who was objectively pointing out intonation errors that shaped their perception. So not only do they have great musical ears, but they have really finely tooled perception of their intonation. So we can do the same thing because we have software now. We have technology and that is the big game changer, but you have to use it intelligently. So what you're gonna do is you need to find an app or software. Now the one I recommend is Intonia. It's available for both Android and iOS for the phone. You can also uh, download the software for the computer. 
What you're not going to do is just use a tuner where you play a note and then the needle shows you where you are. That's not how you're going to use this, okay? This is really, really amazing. So with, with the Antonia software, it records you as you're playing. Okay, that's the thing. You, you need to just play and have it record you. Then you're going to go back and you're going to look and you're going to see the truth. When you see the truth and when you hear the truth, it is mind blowing. I mean, all of a sudden your perception changes. You can have big, huge paradigm shifts because what you believed to be true wasn't true. And then you hear what's correct and you can fix it. So what you do is you turn on the software, you play, you repeat something. I'm just going to use that opening, that same excerpt. You're going to repeat it over and over. When you think you played it your best, when you feel it's the most in tune, you're going to stop. Then you're going to look. Okay, so we'll just do this. Okay, so here we are in front of the software, and I played that opening. Let's see. There's me tuning. One, oh, and you can already tell how out of tune it was when I started. So if you see it, red line, that means it's a little sharp, blue means it's a little flat, and white means it's in tune. So that was my first attempt, and I was clearly unhappy with it. I did it again. Now, the notes where I used vibrato, I, would, I will expect to see both blue, white, and pink. That's okay. But if I see con straight lines that are either pink or blue, then that's where I'm concerned. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four. Ugh, that one was a bad one. Five, six, a little better. Six. So I, I stopped here because I felt to, to my perception, it was in tune. So now that I'm looking at it, I was more or less in tune. There's one note, this B flat is a little sharp. Now when I play it the second time, it was in tune, but the first time I play it, it's a little sharp. Now when I go back and listen, now that I see the truth, now that I see it sharp, I will more easily hear the truth as well. So then when I go back and practice it, then I can realign my perception and pay more attention to that. So here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So wow, now it's so obvious to me that these two B flats were very different. The first time I played it high and the second time it was in tune. Listen to it again. So now that I, I can hear and see this discrepancy, it's something I will focus on the next time I'm, I'm playing it. I will really focus to keep this B flat consistent from from the first one to the next one. So what's amazing to me is is how how I heard a note as being really in tune when in fact it wasn't. And once it's pointed out, once I see the truth in front of my eyes and then I hear and I and I am it's confirmed, then that's when I can make really significant improvements. And, we're, and really change, change the wiring, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the wiring for hearing intonation. Okay, now here's something I am sure you're not, you're not aware of, and that is that most likely you too often play near the fingerboard. And when you play near the fingerboard, it distorts intonation. It distorts sound so much so that it actually will bend pitch. So your fingers may be in the right place, but if you're playing too close to the fingerboard, the tone is not going to resonate. The string is not going to vibrate freely, and then you'll have pitch distortion. 
I mean, I didn't do anything with my finger. Okay, that is just a result of too much pressure too close to the fingerboard. Okay, that's it. So, the lesson is, the moral of this is, keep your bow at least in the middle here. I, I like to, just in general, to, to put the outer edge of the bow hair, I have to line the outer edge of the bow hair, hair right in the middle. What that does is that puts my sounding point a little above middle, okay? That's where, where like I said, most often, just for, for most of the playing that you're doing, most of your practicing, you'll get a really solid tone and... and you'll be able to hear the true pitch much, much easier. All right, now my next tip has a little bit to do with the, the opening advice, which is just to keep your hand really well in shape. But beyond that, I want you to think about the stability of the fingertip itself. So if, you're, if when you play, you're on the tippy tips of the fingers, and sometimes teachers uh, recommend playing really high, with a high hand level and so the fingers are super squared up like this and you're playing right on the tips. I don't think that's great. First of all, it's like you're like you're playing on a ball. It's like it turns the end of the fingertip into a little ball and it's easy to rock and it's easy to roll. So the really the most solid structure we can have is something that is more at a 45 degree angle. That is 45 degrees from the very tip of the finger to that first knuckle. So like this, so not this way and not that way, but right at about 45 degrees. And same with the angle of our finger to the neck of the instrument. So generally speaking, the knuckles are at about a 45 degree angle. So like, so here's the fingerboard, here's the knuckle line like this that puts the, the angle of the fingertips at the, also a 45 degree angle. So if you're, let's, let's say that your teacher advocates that you turn your hand all the way around like this, so it's kind of parallel to the fingerboard, that's not very stable. The finger just will rock so easily and tilt and wiggle back and forth like that. So these 45 degree angles are really solid, create solid structures. So when you put your finger down, you ask yourself the question, does it feel solid or does it feel unstable? Is there an excess rocking or leaning? Or when I put my finger down, does it feel like boom? That is a solid structure. So fingertip stability. So before I give you my last tip, I want to invite you over to violinlab.com. That's my website. I've spent the last decade making lots of great instructional videos and I would so appreciate if you checked it out and of course I would love it if you joined me and became a member. That would be that would be so nice to see you there. So my last tip is to every day if you can have a five minute zenful moment where you are gonna play a scale or something with a drone. I want you to deepen your sensitivity to harmony so that when you're playing note after note after note, you start to hear a larger harmonic context and a harmonic environment because violin, violins, we are basically melodic instruments. But when you hear the, the, these reverberations of tone in the air after you play a note and you hear how they can mesh together to form harmony. You know, I'm hearing that minor triad. I'm hearing a minor chord, okay? Or I'm not hearing it, I'm sensitive to its being there. So what I want you to do is to get uh, this app, TE Tuner. I mean, there are other apps you can certainly search for, but what is nice about this is it does, you can create drones and you can, you can add as many notes to your drone as you want. You could 
create a drone cluster if you want. But I'm going to do a D and an A. Okay, so I, I'm hearing that. So when I play a D minor scale, or just a part of a scale, I play it really slowly. I hear how those notes blend with my drone. And go slow, go slow, and just re and listen and absorb and feel. Listen for blend. A lot of times when you're in tune, you'll know you're in tune because you s won't hear the sound source. You won't hear the drone. Like if my D is perfectly in tune with that D, I start to lose, uh, I start to not be able to hear that drone because it's so blended. So I, I hope these tips are, are helpful. I hope your intonation improves and thank you so much for watching.